Jackson, son of a Revolutionary War hero. He's from the North, but he was pro-slavery. They thought this was going to work. Uh, two months before the, this is crazy. Two months before his inauguration, he and his family were in a train crash, and the only casualty was his 11-year-old son. Damn. So his entire time in office, he's blacked out, drunk, and depressed. He's the saddest guy of all time. He's not listening. His kid just died. His wife blamed him for the death constantly. Oh. She was like, we should have never been on that train. You just had to be the fucking president. Oh, well, you man. gave birth to him, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you, <didn't have> <laughs> you were on the train. You were. Yeah. You had fun. Yeah, dude. Fuck. Uh, so he's there. During Pierce, they do the Transcontinental Railroad. This is, this is like the real, this is a fuck up. For the, the North wants it to be from Chicago to L.A., or one of those places out west. The South wants it to be from Atlanta to L.A. In order to get it done, they have to get rid of the Missouri line compromise, which made it nothing north or south of here. It was the slave line. Uh, they decided to make it so every new territory got to decide themselves. They got to vote in order to get the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, so this opened... Every single thing we did to build this nation ran into this slave problem. Yes. Every single thing we tried to do was like, yeah, but the fucking north south slave fucking yep. slave states, non slave states. Jesus. We need to build a railroad across. That's the first interstate yes. thing. The first interstate objective. Yeah. It's the first thing that it's the first thing that need you need a federal government. It's why we start the federal government got stronger and stronger. Because every state gets to do their own thing, but you want to take a fucking train from one to the other, you guys, these two states have to make a compromise. Yeah. So you needed a federal government to make these It was like the Precursor to union, non union. They just blow yeah, up a yeah, gigantic, yeah. like, flammable red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's uh, the other reason, just to, just as general thing, that you, the federal government became what gave the federal government power was the states wanting parity with each other. Like when environmental laws became a thing, they were state laws. So, like, Indiana would make a law you can't dump, you know, sludge into the river anymore. So, every company in Indiana has to pay extra to do a better job of dumping their shit and take it to the ocean or somewhere else, ruin somebody else's life. Yeah. <laughs> but so next door to Indiana is Illinois. And they're like, we dump, we go and we dump anything we want. Yeah. And so all the business goes there. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Indiana, the Illinois company's like, we don't want to dump. We don't want to hurt the environment, but we can't compete with these guys. Yeah. Right. So they would go the so they all the states would go to the Fed and say, please pass a law that affects everybody yeah. so that we can all do the right thing that we want to do without having to get squeezed out by this guy. Yeah. And that worked until we started doing shit with Mexico and India and China. <laughs> um, but anyway, go on. But yeah, so, it's, it's Taylor. It was, it was interesting we? to me. We're at uh, I think Pierce, Pierce. right? On yeah. the on the Transcontinental Railroad. Yeah. That turns out to be like that's what started it. I mean, obviously, there's a ton of major factors, but that was like a big one because it opened what was called the Nebraska-Kansas Act, which is they got to decide to vote whether they were pro-slave or pro-abolition. So then a bunch of people just rushed in yeah, from, just the, voted, from the north and the south, and they started fucking killing each other. What? It was the, it was, I forget the names. They were pretty sick. It was like the Free Staters versus the Border Ruffians. This is where John Brown and his son was out there. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, they started hacking people with swords to death. Like Jesus. that was that was that was it. And Franklin Pierce was like, uh, he did nothing. He didn't get involved. Yeah, but dude, it must have been crazy when you had a bunch of slaves. Like this is wrong. You had to be like, nah. -uh. You no. couldn't. It must have been crazy to be like, no, nah, I don't think it is. Well, you just would pretend not to, or you just wouldn't. I mean, you'd see it on the newspaper was faded, and yeah. it was like, I don't, I don't know that much about it. <laughs> Just uh, not being able to go down. I'm with okay that to my slaves. I treat them okay. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> True. Yeah. Right? Tell him. He's <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, he was all right. He was a, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, and meanwhile, the North was starting to get. Uh, I mean, this is getting after Pierce is who? Buchanan. So yeah. Buchanan is the guy who Lincoln who uh, right before Lincoln. Yes. Right. Because the other thing that was going on is the North is industrializing and the North is starting yes. to build sweat houses and factories, and so part of the argument that people were having that is like the kind of argument we would have now if it would be interesting to take this culture with yeah. twitter and everything and supplant it to slavery days and how we would have handled that debate back then True, because there were people that were saying you know the north has free workers and a ton of them immigrants that had started 
and they're treated like garbage. They're living like shit, and there's, they're dying in large numbers and getting sick, mm-hmm. uneducated, not all, and being not allowed to be educated. Yeah. Kids are working uh, heavy, a ton long of southern, shifts. Southern political cartoons that are like that. That are about how bad they were. And like our slaves are like a member dancing. of the family. Yeah, we uh, we we give them their own house with their plot of land. They get to do this mm-hmm. and that. We you know most slave owners were this were better. That this is the argument, yeah. and that the North was just like wholesale destroying lives yeah and Damn. uh you know read uh, uh what's his name fucking uh upton sinclair the way yeah. shit was going on in chicago and the Is slaughterhouse the meat what's it called uh it's, it, it's about the meat packing shit right yeah the jungle his, what's it called ju- the jungle yeah yeah, yeah. so um, another important thing about that that point of the the industrialization of the north it just flooded with immigrants so yeah. now their population is so big that they get more votes, they get more electoral count, uh. like all that. So now the South's like, we need to, we need to get power. We need so now we need more states. We need more states because uh. uh, otherwise they're going to abolish slavery and we're going to be poor. And but they're also hanging <laughs> on to a way of life in the South. Yeah. And in the North, they're not. They're trying to do anything that's new and anything that's next and anything that's large amounts of money and large amounts of industry. And they're 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 uh, manufacturing in huge amounts in the South. They're just trying to play a fiddle and whip yeah. a guy <laughs> and uh, grow grow a little tuft of cotton for yeah. a shirt, one shirt every six months. Yeah, true. It's a good thing you point out. Yeah. It's important to know. True. Yeah, this that, that us- was the fight. It was an insanely different. Yeah. But we still wanted to be one country. We wanted to be one country. So it was this weird con- a conflict that yeah. never went away. So yeah, then, like, does it continue to morph till now? It's just like some dudes it does. Like chill, it's, we, wear we are, heart, and other dudes like, no, we need to talk about. It. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of tight. But the, so okay, so what's his name? Now we're at James Buchanan, who's yeah. probably the worst. Yeah, I think was just fro- he was frozen by two. He had so much pressure. He was a lawyer from Pennsylvania that was just about the law. Yeah, which was the last thing he needed to be as the president. Which was like, well, that's the rule. But he had all of Lincoln's problems with none of his charisma yeah. and guts. Yeah. And blood. That was you know, crazy. James Buchanan had the Dred Willingness Scott. Willingness to kill. Dred Scott yeah. was under James Buchanan, which yeah. was where, if you don't know about that, that was about a slave living in free territory, and he was suing to get his freedom. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court where they ruled uh, he was an object, so he had no, he was yeah. not a citizen. Therefore, that ruling made sure every black person in America was an object yeah, and so. not a citizen. And... uh Buchanan responded by saying, that's the law. It, that settles it. Instead of standing up, he right. just had to follow the law. Yeah. So he was just like an extension of the court. Yeah. That's not, that wasn't his job. Yeah. Man, that's And sucks. that brought us to Lincoln. And as soon as Lincoln gets elected, the South secedes. Yeah. Every state starts to say we're not America anymore. Like yeah. immediately before he takes... Yeah. Yeah, office. It's also crazy checking in on the headlines, and you're like, "Nah, they said you're a chair, basically." And you're like, "Fuck, <laughs> yeah, dude, yes. fuck." Uh, you got Lincoln though. You know Lincoln. Well, we could sh- maybe skip him because it'll be the whole fucking. Yeah, we could stop. I mean, look, we could Lincoln, stop with Lincoln. Let's stop true. with Lincoln, and then you go on to some guys you're interested in after Lincoln. All right. Yeah, we're good. What we can time, go as long as long we, we want. Been talking for an hour. Okay. Well, Lincoln, you're not enjoying us. You're not having the time of your life. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I knew you would. This is I'm not, nice, I'm right? Not having a great time. You're not having a great time. No, I'm not. I hate this. Decent time. Really? No, I'm having a good time. <laughs> How much fun? You decide which one. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the thing I liked about, I, I mean, I gave you that book about Lincoln. Yeah. That's a great. Uh, what's his name? Carl Sandburg. It's a weird kind of stream of consciousness telling of Lincoln's story in four volumes. It's crazy. Just the warriors, just from when he took office. And um, when he was coming here, there was everything. Hell was breaking loose, and there was supposed to be a January 6th. There was supposed to be one. There was a plan to stop the certifying of the vote. Mm -hmm. And so they went to uh, General... Fuck, what was his name? He was the only American general then, because we didn't fight wars anymore. Yeah. So the Um, army was kind of like not... You Fuck, know, I think he was the commander. He's, it, it's a name you just know when, when you hear it. Started. Like Scott something. Oh, yeah, Winfield Scott. Winfield Scott. Yes. Perfect. So they went to Winfield Scott, the guys running the government, and then they said, we think there's going to be this thing where they're going to try to stop the... Uh... So he said, um, he said, if anyone... He did made a declaration he said, publicly. He said, if anyone tries to stop the counting of the votes and the democratic process from happening, either by force or by infiltration... 
I I will stuff them into my cannon and fertilize my lawn with them. That's what he said. Lincoln said that. That's what he said. <laughs> what? No, and, Winfield uh, Scott. Oh, Winfield Scott yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah, but and what he did in real <laughs> fact because he was a really smart guy, he gave all of the capital police and all those guys that they had the the day off. He said go home, and he went and got uh, policemen from Baltimore, from New York City, all kinds of like badass cops, mm. and he had them in plain clothes. All over the capital, heavily, all heavily armed, but in Jesus. plain clothes. So, and people know. So, if somebody started something, the guy would just go like this or elbow him or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But the appearance was that it was peaceful and that there was no military presence. Whoa! But nothing happened. Um, that's what it took to get Lincoln. Everybody up to the minute that happened, everyone was like, "I don't know if he's ever going to take office." Yeah. People believed he would never be president. Dude, he wasn't even on the what? ballot in the southern states. Not even on the ballot. Yeah. What? He didn't win one southern state. A lot of people, big, big people who yeah. would be like whoever now, wrote long things saying, don't take office. Your presidency, your the, the, your victory is hollow. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Not even just people from the south, but people from the north. They were, they, everyone was afraid that Lincoln was going to just immediately free the slaves and start war with the south. And the, his first inauguration, mm -hmm. he says... First thing, first thing out of his mouth is, I have no intention yeah, yeah. of freeing the Southern slaves or changing their slave laws. And yes, we will chase down and bring you back your slaves yeah. when they come up here within reason. He puts like a tiny thing of yeah. like, we're not going to like make it our obsession, but we will do it. Like so it's the first thing out of his mouth. That's what bothers me about people, like people that are critics of him, hang on to that. And they're like, you know, Lincoln didn't want to do it. It's like, dude, the whole time, that's what he wanted. Of course he did. That's what, again, it goes all the way back yeah. to the framers. They all wanted this to be a better country than it was. So they they knew they couldn't, they couldn't create a nation yeah. without slavery. Mm -hmm. So they said, let's create a nation where people can change peacefully. They can change not only leadership, but the laws that, you, that create a situation where people figure it out for themselves and move forward and change instead of like a constitution could have been a very permanent thing. It could have been a very solid permanent thing, but they actually made it elastic on purpose. Um, and that's, yeah, Lincoln was like, we'll do it guys. Yeah. We'll do it. We yeah. just, we need some fucking time and boy, what it cost yeah. is crazy. And a lot of people who didn't want slavery were really angry at Lincoln for how hard he pushed that war and that mm -hmm. he didn't, just settle it. Just let the South do whatever they want. We have we have our free blacks here. Mm -hmm. Let them take their chances down there. Um, you're killing millions or however many fucking, I don't know how many Quarter, people it was. Like was quarter of a million people died in the Civil War? Yeah, probably around there. Something like At about least. how many we killed in Iraq in a day? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. For, less, for doing nothing. Less than for doing Middle nothing. Eastern civilians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Measure it like Persian weddings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it was, yeah, Lincoln's the Lincoln's the best. I, it I was really think, something. I mean, it just took a lot, close. a lot of political guts, a lot of doing, a lot of, oh, fuck. Yeah. This is going to suck. Just trying to talk to these fucking cunts from the South. That must oh. be that it's just like, clearly this is for money. You know it's wrong. Yep. You know it's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's, dude, it's 1865. Well, it was the yeah. ultimate 1860. time. 1860. They know it's wrong. Well, and yeah. folks not wanting to say that shit's wrong. Yeah. And him... Like not making them say it, but getting them to yeah, just one guy at a time, one guy at a time. Mm -hmm. He would just go around, get support here, get support there, put muscle in where he had it, and he fought a brutal, brutal war, a yep. fucking a, a incessant war. And he had to wait until he got a victory to fucking announce the Emancipation Proclamation. Oh, he was yeah. trying so hard to get it out, but his generals kept fucking up and losing. Oh, like, Fuck. And he would just be writing to these dudes like, go. Yeah, please do get, it. Get one. Get one. Like, I think he wrote it after Antietam, which was like a draw. <laughs> he was like, that's pretty oh, well, good. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's like, that's close enough. Here we go. So We're then doing he's it. Shot. Yeah, and then he got his fucking head blown off yeah. by next to his wife. Yeah. Uh, and they put a little napkin, but that was what they did for him. They put a little na napkin back there <laughs> and hoped, but it was not a good. <laughs> it, was, it was not a very. He was alive for napkin. a while after. Yeah, that's what he I'm didn't saying. just like, die right away. He didn't have to die at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't die right Pledge away. Death. Really? Yeah, Pledge he, death. He was like alive in the yeah. like, hotel for like just, a and they're day. Like, we don't know how to do anything. 
Yeah. Yeah. What play was he seeing? Does anyone know? Fuck, I do know. Wait, what? What play? What was the play? play? It was yeah. at the Ford's Theater. I don't remember the... Um, see what he was watching. Yeah, something good. Yeah. He was fixated. <laughs> he was into it. Was he Hamilton. didn't notice the assassin. That was a weird thing. It was Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, it was a Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. He was sitting there like, what was it? Nice. He was sitting there watching it like, I got to pretend to like this. Yeah. It was fucking Hamilton. And then they shot him. He was like, thank God. <laughs> this place sucks. Christ, this shit <laughs> sucks so bad. <laughs> um, so that brings us to Johnson. So who, Johnson was great. the first, first uh, guy to be impeached. Was what? he impeached? Oh, yeah. First guy to be impeached, yeah. Johnson shows up. This is great. He was he was like a tough guy. He was supposed to be the counteraction to yeah. Lincoln. Well, he's one of the reasons the war was prolonged because everybody knew if we could just get rid of Lincoln, Johnson was behind him with there was a deal to be made. It was like, don't it was like, yeah. don't talk outside the family. He was like, son, you know, yeah. Sonny liked my deal, didn't he? Sonny was hot for <laughs> yeah, my deal. Yeah. Johnson would have fucking settled in a yeah. minute. Johnson started his life as an indentured servant. No shit. And worked his way up. How sick is that? That's impressive. And then before his inauguration, he got fucked up on whiskey and just couldn't talk. <laughs> his inauguration. It was in the rain and the mud right after Lincoln got shot. Well, and everyone was, was the like, first one. He's, he's the one who proved you can, you can impeach a president, mm-hmm. but you cannot get the fucking votes. It's a yeah. waste of time, and he ends up stronger. Yeah. It's the dumbest move in the world. It's va- it's vanity. Yeah. It's just uh, Congress hates the president. It's just bullshit. Yeah. But it doesn't accomplish anything. They they I don't remember why they went after him. Whatever he was Me very neither. corrupt. He's fucked up guy. I don't. Who knows? It's all mm. shit that I heard because of them. But they they <laughs> impeached him and then failed to get rid of him. Really? I know nothing else about him. But, but I don't know either. But then fucking Grant Grant. Amazing guy. Great guy. Amazing guy. I feel like his presidency was a bit of a fucking letdown for how cool he was. I mean, he did so Christing much, this guy. Oh, true. Great. To to help the South, he was pretty good. What did he do? Well, and is, he was he was uh, okay. first of all, some people get on him because he owned a sl- he owned us one slave oh, man. because his father, his father in law, his wife's father <sighs> yes. hated him because he was an abolitionist. I mean he wasn't like an active abolitionist. Sure. But he was against slave, just for not having a slave. Yeah. Back then, if you didn't have a slave, you were a dick to certain yeah. people. So you were like, put on a mask. Yeah, yeah. you were yeah. that guy. You were like, why yeah, do you exactly. have slaves? Yeah, and they're like, why is this guy making me feel uncomfortable? Yeah. <laughs> so he hated him because he had slaves and he didn't want one. So mm. he gave him one for as a wedding present, like to spite him. What a dick. Yeah. So Jesus. Uh, so Grant made the guy his partner. And yeah. they started a little business together, which he then freed the guy and gave him the business. Yeah. He, so he, he made that guy. He would go life. work with the slaves. But He'd they, be out there with them working. Yeah. He, and then he, while he was like financially ruined, yeah. he freed his slaves instead of selling them. But he had one, though? Uh, I'm not sure. He might have had one at that That's point. The story, the story I just told you yeah. is, I think, his slave story. I don't think yeah. he had a bunch of them. He, so, had, he had one slave and he freed him instead of selling them. But his and father-in-law, he, and, he, and he gave him a business that yeah. he had started with him. Yeah, but his father-in-law history fucked him. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Here's yeah, yeah. that's right." Here's and then he was in he the did army. Absolutely. <laughs> he was in the army, and he went. Uh, one of his first uh, jobs was uh, outpost near San Francisco. It was in the middle of nowhere. There was no. I mean, it was in the desert of California. Mm. He was the only one there, and he was a, fa- a family man. He loved his family. He missed his bed. He missed his mm. family so much, and he started just getting drunk. And they, somebody came to drop the mail and found him passed out drunk, and that was his only experience with alcohol. He was not; he was a very rigidly living guy, and he was thought known as a drunk for the rest of his life. Really? There's every arguments. time he had a political problem, they'd go, "He's drinking." There's arguments. <laughs> There's rumors he was fucked up at Shiloh because he sat a, because he sat under a tree in the rain. They found him sitting under a tree in the rain outside of a military hospital. It also is funny cuz Shiloh he woke up on day 2 of it. Yeah. At like the start of day 2 or maybe it was the start of day 1 when it started. He was yeah. late to get there. So everybody was like he was hammered. But what? if he was hammered, that's very funny. To be like, "Oh shit, there's a war." Oh, <laughs> like, so oh. after up, he like, was after here. he was he had won the civil war. Uh, started really reconstruction, like started like re- he was in earnest wanting to get opportunities and, e- and equity for black people, e- equal opportunity for black people. And then he retired and was in New York. He became a New Yorker. He became a big, big part of this city. 
Yeah. And he had a son named Kermit, who I think his name was Kermit. <laughs> who, that was the 1800s. Yeah. Sure. So Kermit invested. <laughs> what a fucking great name. That's invested hilarious. his money and all of his father's money with some asshole guy who took it and just left town and just oh. took all of their money, every penny that they had. And uh, so Grant went to visit Vanderbilt, who's outside of the um, Grand Central Station. Is a great uh, statue of him. I think it was Vanderbilt. Yeah. Went to the richest man in New York City. Um, who was a hard ass, a guy who didn't care for charity or anything, but he brought his, he brought, sure, uh, what's his name? Uh, the sword that was, uh, who, yeah, who's, yeah. Uh, Lee. Well, Robert, he had Robert E. Lee's sword that he um, surrendered to yeah. him. What? He had his Congressional Medal of Honor and the Bible that he was, that he took the oath of office in. And he gave them, he said, I want to sell these to you because I have no money. And Vanderbilt said, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, the president. Dude. Holy shit. We're not doing that. He said, I, I'm going to uh, donate these to the National Museums and I'll give you a, you know, like he bought them for the nation. Did he, but did he buy oh. his biography? Isn't that what he No, so he here's what happened with the biography. It's the yeah. best part of his story. And it's actually his greatest legacy. His, his, biography, his autobiography is like the greatest ever written. Yeah. So... Um, he met two guys on a train. He was didn't do he'd do anything for money at this point. His because his <laughs> wife was very young. <laughs> he was broke. Two guys after on everything he'd been through. <laughs> he was broke, and his wife was young, and he was going to leave her uh, um, a destitute. So he met two guys on a train. They're like, "Why don't you write your autobiography? We'll pay you a thousand dollars." And he was like, "Done." What? Oh, so then, <laughs> about a week later, he meets up with. Um, uh, uh, Mark Twain was like his best friend mm. and Mark Twain said uh, why don't you write your autobiography uh, your memoirs and he said I'm doing that for these guys and he goes what are they paying you and he goes thousand dollars and he's like dude <laughs> what is wrong with you <laughs> and he says give me the book I'll publish because he, he Mark Twain had started his own publishing company because uh -huh. yeah. he hated publishers he said I'll publish it and I'll help you write it and he said, I promised those two guys. He's like, did you sign something? He goes, no, but I did. I like, I gave my word. Fuck. So, uh, so um, Twain uh, or his real name, what's his? Uh, Clemens. Clemens yeah. goes, travels to, I think he went to see Sherman. He went to see, he's like, I need to see somebody who trusts, who, you know, mm -hmm. he'll listen to. So he went to visit Sherman and said, please like, please get him to do this. So Sherman wrote a telegram to Grant saying, for for the love of God, give the book to Clemens. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the thing. That's awesome. So he wrote his biography, autobiography, and the, the remarkable thing about it that I read was that there's like no adjectives in it. It's like all verbs and nouns. The entire book what? is verbs and nouns because he just says what happened. It's a very well-written book. And uh, so Clemens turned it into this special edition that you had to order one. You could get any color you wanted. And it was the first blockbuster book in American yeah. history. It made like half a million dollars in what? the first month. Meanwhile, he had a goiter that was growing and Three growing. stogies. You always uh, see him with the stogies. Yeah. Died of uh, throat cancer like right as he finished the book. Whoa. And then his wife was made for life. Her yeah. first check from Twain was like $400,000. Whoa. Yeah, I think he wasn't he buried here. And yes, monument. and he's buried in in Grant's tomb on the yes. in Harlem. And when he died, the nor there was this huge funeral, and it was northern and southern soldiers. Southern soldiers were allowed to put back on their southern uniforms because it was a big thing that his casket was carried yeah. by north and south. It's too uh, bad you can never get away with wearing a Confederate uniform in Harlem these days. No, because no, no. that would get be a away treat. with. <laughs> yeah, but he was he was fucking awesome at the when when Lee surrendered. He was very like I mean it was it was unconditional surrender. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you guys are gonna fucking give up, but he was like, keep your guns, go home, start rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Like he could have fucking destroyed the South. Yeah, yeah. And he was very chill. I think Custer stole the fucking sword. He hated Did Custer. He? I think Custer stole Lee's sword. Is Maybe he got right? it back. But I think the story was Grant wouldn't accept it or something along those lines. Keep it? And yeah, Custer, Custer was a bloodthirsty guy. And then on his, on the parade back into Washington, yeah. Grant was obviously out front. Custer fucking rode ahead. And Grant was like, this motherfucker. 
<laughs> Custer was With the his man. Blonde hair. You look at if you look into Custer, he was pretty fucking. Yeah, cool. I don't know much about him. He fucked up Jeb's store at Gettysburg, which was mm-hmm. pretty cool because Jeb was the man. And he wrote in, about him. he was with the Michigan Cavalry, and he was like, come on, you Wolverines, and fucking led him into a charge. That's why they're the Michigan Wolverines, Damn. all that shit. So then it's you got cool. Hayes, <laughs> who undid all of this yeah. cool stuff for black people. It's uh, all and politically, very... just he didn't want to get deal with it, so he just, did, he just did away with it. And then you got fucking, who else? Then it goes... I Garfield. Then I get bleary. Yeah, this is all, this is like the Gilded Age, is what it's called. It's all yeah. shit. yeah. But this is where shit like it goes from we ended slavery to now just right back into it just just, just racism, really? not slavery, but just every law against them subjugation. Just it like just every it became the same obsession as before. Yeah, but without slavery, it just became all about not letting them vote, keep them off the and that goes ballot. all the way up until like now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like we're until just, just yesterday. We, fig- yeah. we figured it out. We yesterday. figured it out yesterday. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Finally, the Arkansas. Day we got a nice little nation. Yeah. Here. Louisiana cleaned up their act a little. True. And Alabama. My favorite True. president, just jumping way the fuck yeah. ahead, is uh, Nixon is my favorite. Dude, he's awesome. He's the best. And again, as a character. Yes. Nixon gave the country one great gift that I, I wish was like, I wish it was taught like the speech that Lincoln has on his monument oh. and the ask not what your country mm. and all that shit. The greatest thing that he did, because it speaks more to what Americans live, is that when Nixon was shamed and destroyed and had to leave office, he had to fucking resign. He had to give after a couple of I'm not a crook and this is all bullshit. He had to go and say, well, I'm going to go. (laughs) Still not a crook, but I'm going to get out of here. uh, Gerald Ford would take the oath of office at this time in this office. And he left. But before he left, he gave a speech to his staff, um, to the White House staff. It was impromptu. It was just on his way to the to the to mm-hmm. the uh, helicopter. And he's just and he's copiously crying in the speech. <laughs> there's video of it that you can see. You have to try to find the whole thing because there's clips that you can find on YouTube. But I actually ordered from C-SPAN a DVD of the whole speech. And. Um, they're all bawling, the whole staff, and his family standing behind him. And he just tells them, look, don't – he's encouraging them. He said, this is a tough moment for all of us. He said, first of all, I don't want to encourage – I don't want to discourage young people from taking – from being in public service. He was afraid of what would – what the – what would what happen. has happened. Yes. He was right. He said, don't be discouraged from public office. It's a great – calling and he said and for for any mistakes that we made and all the th- everything that's happened not one person in this administration um gained financially from anything from being here left richer than when they got here he made it first so he defended everybody that was there and then he just starts reflecting for he reads from teddy roosevelt's uh autobiography from his diary when teddy's uh wife and mother died at the same night they both died at the cholera or whatever on the same night he was going from room one room to the other oh yeah and they both died and he was like at 21 or something and he wrote this quote that was like the light has gone out and it'll be darkness forever and he said he so he read it to his staff and he said that's how he felt having lost his wife and his mom and he went on and had this incredible life so he's trying to say don't so he says now don't be discouraged Never be petty. Uh, don't hate your enemies because that's when you'd start to destroy yourself. He yeah. start, He gets it really introspective about everything that happened without talking about it. And then he says, it's horrible. He goes, um, he says, uh, they'll never write a book about my mother, but she was a saint. And, oh, man. And I think of her, like one of his brothers had tuberculosis and they had no money. So she moved to Arizona where the air was better. Mm. And she was a nurse, a wet nurse. She nursed other people's babies for money in order that her son could live in Arizona. And he talks about his father, who was a lemon farmer, who had a failing lemon farm. And then he was a uh, switchman on a on a streetcar. And he just talks about his parents and and what they did for him and all that shit. He just he, and he just cries 
Oh, it was it's fucking beautiful, but it shows you a dis- a man at the at the height of American experience destroyed from that height, which is the worst thing that can happen yeah. to a person is to get that <laughs> high and fall and he just went here's how this feels. He just told the world this is how this feels, this is what this looks like. Yeah. <laughs> and uh here's w- all I can say and then he went and then he left. Incredible. I mean, he was one of the most influential people in American history. Yeah. He ended Vietnam, right? Yes, that I mean, was already he, about. He was done. in that. He was in. He was fucking uh, Eisenhower's vice president. He there's there's a there's a guy we know that's a bit of a conspiracy guy, mm-hmm. but he's been pretty correct on everything so far, and he's got a book coming out <laughs> on Watergate. Yeah, okay, and about how that was more it was a little darker than it seemed. Like so his I opponents- knew a guy back when I was first living in the city as a comedian. Um, there was a guy named Frank, um, Gannon who had a, Frank Gannon wrote speeches for Nixon and was a very close friend of his. And weirdly, he became the guy who books the comedians on Letterman. (laughs) And when I moved to New York back in 1990 or so, being on Letterman was the, all anybody wanted. So Gannon was the most important person in comedy at the time. And he was a strange guy who was very serious. And he would just come and he'd watch you. And if he liked you, he'd get Morty to come. And maybe you'd be on the show. So he liked me. He never get, got me on the show. But he liked me. So I, I went to Letterman's office and met him. And I asked him about Nixon. Because he, he wrote, Nixon has one big biography called RN that Gannon co-wrote. And he told me that when you get a few drinks in Nixon, he says the same people that got the Kennedys got me. It's the same really? same people that got yeah, he said it's the same machine Whoa. that took out Yeah, John and what Robert with Kennedy. came after him. He said they just couldn't use bullets anymore because it was getting too they were getting they were That's on exactly to, what we said. Yeah, yeah. This is we yeah. said that without and him. Watergate was he said Watergate was something that happened all the time. It was just yeah. like and still does. I mean, it's not yeah. like oh my oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah. It's, like, it's how things are done. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a safe with a million dollars in it. What president doesn't have a safe with a million dollars? Yeah. yeah. It was uh so that's yeah. that's Nixon's story. That was that was Nixon's story. He didn't Whoa. say it in public sure. because the same as he conceded the presidency to Kennedy, which Kennedy stole. Um, I mean, oh, everyone knows that that his yeah. father took suitcases of money to delegations and yeah. stole the presidency, and Nixon knew it, and he was like, "I'm not gonna. That's not good for the country to get into." That's why he resigned instead of standing trial, and that's why he didn't talk about that. That's that's the story, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's, that's wild, a good man. that's a good uh, most interesting president. Most interesting, I think, to me. Yeah, I mean, Johnson was also a fascinating guy. Yeah. Johnson was, and Reagan was uh, kind of an empty-headed genius, incredible, knows how yeah. to just be. As long as somebody else is in the room, Reagan was brilliant. But I'm not sure he had any thoughts. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There's people like that. Yeah, yeah. He, he was like an actor that was He's like, an I guess I'll be a Republican yeah. while he was there. Uh-huh. And then... Which was which was pretty admirable at the time because he was actually no it wasn't because that was in the middle of the Red Scare he was like one of the guys being like you're a communist yeah. <laughs> and he just became the man. <laughs> My favorite film of Reagan is Larry King interviewing him after he was shot and saying so what do you what do you how do you what do you feel about this guy and he said well I just pray for him he's a sick man he's just you know, I found out later that he's he's sick. He's mentally ill. So we add him to our prayers, and uh, we hope him for the best for him. And he says it with this big. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's like, yes. we're fucking that guy up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, he's. I hope he's doing good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing great. Yeah. Um, I think that yeah, that should be it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think so. that's that about enough. Fun. You had fun. Yeah, it was good. Why do you accusing me of having fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Uh, thanks for yeah, thanks for doing thank it, man. Sure, thanks for asking.